In the previous example, we saw, saw how to transform by inspection this transfer function into observable canonical form. But now I want to show in the derivation how that's done. So I'm going to take and use the same steps we did in deriving the form of observable canonical form and show how a specific transfer function ends up with this result. This may make the derivation a little bit more straightforward, too. Okay, so here, what the, the general steps I'm going to do is I'm going to take my denominator and multiply it times y of s. And I'm going to take u of s, let's use a slightly different color here, so that it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to do the same thing for u of s and multiply it times the numerator. So when I do this, it's going to allow me to write my system of equations and then do a little bit of rearranging. So now, because I can do this as part of a video, I'm just going to copy and paste some of these bits because it's going to make it a little bit more straightforward. So I'm going to take the denominator here, and I'm going to multiply this denominator times y of s. Then I'm going to take the numerator here, and I'm going to multiply this numerator times u of s. And so I'm going to multiply through now each side and multiply them by each of the s variables. So I'm going to take away the, the y of s part and just write y because it's going to make it a little bit more straightforward. So I'm going to have s cubed y plus 9s squared y plus 24sy plus 20y is equal to s times u plus 3 times u. So here, clearly, I'm saying that y of s equals y, and u of s equals u. That's just a shorthand for this part of the derivation. Okay, so now I'm going to take everything here and move it over to the other side of the equation. So we're just going to do this in sort of a coarse way. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And then I'm going to take this piece, and I'm going to put it on this side, and then I'm going to multiply it by a minus. To make it clear what it is that we're doing here. So it's not really like a video animation of what's happening, but it might make it a little bit more clear exactly what's happened. So now I'm going to do a little bit of magic at the same time here. So it's hard to skip steps in an example that's online, but I hope this will be clear. So first I'm going to take this minus sign and multiply it all the way through. So let's go ahead and do this. So now this becomes minus 9s squared, minus 24s, and minus 20 times y. And then I'm going to combine terms. So combining terms is actually a little bit easier. So minus 9s squared y. So that takes care of this piece. And now I'm going to combine the s pieces. So plus s times u minus 24s times y. And then I'm going to combine the pieces that don't have any multiplier by s. So plus 3 times u minus 20 times y. And so I can isolate these actually now. I'm going to write the s in a slightly different way, and this will become clear why in a minute. So s squared times minus 9y plus s times u minus 24 times y plus 3u minus 20 times y. And this is all equal still to s cubed times y. 
So what happens now is I'm going to take the s cubed term and divide it through on the right hand side. So my s cubed piece is going to go away and I'm going to divide by s cubed here and by s cubed here and by s cubed here. So if I do this, you can see that I can simplify these terms here. So instead of s squared over s cubed, I can just write 1 over s. And instead of s over s cubed, I can write 1 over s squared. And then I still have 1 over s cubed on the right-hand side for the, for the rightmost version. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to move it over to a new page so that we have a little bit more space. And I'm going to show now how we can define some state for this system in a nice way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out some S's. And it may not be clear exactly why I'm doing this, but I hope it will be soon. So here now, what I want to write is 1 over s times minus 9y plus 1 over s times 1 over s of u minus 24y plus 1 over s times 1 over s times 1 over s 3u minus 20y. So why did I do that? Well, I'm going to do some more factoring now. So the first kind of factoring that I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the 1 over s times minus 9y. But now I want to take the 1 over s, 1 over s, 1 over s that I see here. And I want to factor out the two 1 over s's. So I'm going to take these 1 over s's and factor them out of this equation here. So it may not seem exactly straightforward why I want to do this, but I hope it will soon. So now I'm going to write plus, plus 1 over s times 1 over s times u minus 24y plus 1 over s times 3u minus 20y. So you can see if I multiply through this 1 over s times 1 over s, I'll still get the same equation that I got above. So here I clearly just factored out the 1 over s times 1 over s. So the next thing that I'd like to do is factor out 1 over s and 1 over s. So I'm going to factor out these two equations, because basically here I have something you might call a, and here I have something that you might call b. And so 1 over s a plus 1 over s times 1 over s b is the same as 1 over s times a plus 1 over s times b. So that's what we're showing here. So now I'm going to take these a and b terms and write them in a slightly, slightly more straightforward way. But it takes a little bit of intuition to see why we've done it this way. And you'll see that in a minute. So here I have 1 over s times minus 9y. That was my a part plus 1 over s times whatever the b part was. So here I have u minus 24 times y plus 1 over s times 3u minus 20 times y. And now I need one more big giant parenthesis here. So I have two big opening parentheses, 1, 2, and this here's 1 and 2. This closes, so here's parenthesis 3, and then that closes, here's parenthesis 3, and then that closes. So our parentheses all match, and now we're going to have a chance to write our system state in a unique way. So essentially what I'm going to do is replace this part here as x3. So x3 will be equal to 1 over s times 3u minus 20 times y. 
So I'm going to write this part now. as x3. x2 will be equal to 1 over s times u minus 24y plus x3. So I can now write this part as x2. And by the way, we're losing some of our parentheses here. So now x1 will be equal to 1 over s times minus 9y plus x2. And in fact, y is just equal to x1. So now I can take this definition of my state to the next page. And I'm going to rewrite this now in matrix form. So now if we write x dot equals something times x plus, actually let's go ahead and write, it might be easier to write it like this. So x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot is equal to some matrix A times x1 x2 x3 plus some matrix B times U, and then Y will be equal to some vector times X1, X2, X3. So we can actually write now that if X1 equals 1 over S times all of these values, then if we take away the integral, this will give us X1 dot and likewise, taking away this integration gives us x2 dot. Taking away this integration gives us x3 dot. So x1 dot is minus 9 times y plus x2. But in fact, we know that y is equal to x1. So I can replace the minus 9 times y with minus 9 times x1. The minus 24 times y is u minus 24 times x1, and the 3u minus 20y is 3u minus 20 times x1. So x1 dot will be minus 9 times x1 plus 1x2 plus 0x3 plus 0u. x2 dot will be equal to minus 24x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3, plus 1u. And x3 dot will be equal to minus 20 times x1, plus 0x2, plus 0x3, plus 3 times u. And y is equal to 1x1, plus 0x2, plus 0x3. So now you can see that the minus 9, minus 24, and minus 20 followed directly from the three coefficients that we saw in our denominator. So this came from our values of A. These came from our values of B. And we always end up with 1, 0, and 0 in the C matrix in canonical observable form, or observable canonical form. So that's a definition with real numbers that shows exactly how this kind of is, the, the equations for using inspection to get observable and canonical form come from.
and hopefully this makes sense now seeing a derivation with an example included.